Hi there, let's continue right where we left off last episode and find out how Spring Boot's property support works, i.e. you create an application properties file, you add some properties to it, and suddenly you have database access or hibernate access. How does that work? Let's find out. All right, so what I did compared to last episode is moving all these inner classes I had in the main class to an upper level, so you'll have your Hello World sublet and your Spring configuration here, just in case you're wondering. And now what you want to do is basically imagine we want to have database support. So when it all goes well, we want to have a data source which is fully configured and which lets us access our database and shoot some SQL queries against that database. So in the end, you want to be able to do something like context get bean and then data source dot class and this line should just work. So that's your data source here. Make sure the imports are right. The SQL import, you can extract a variable like so. And then let's finish up what we do first. So you get a database connection from your data source like so. Then you might want to wrap the whole thing with a try catch like so. When you have your connection and that's just some plain SQL, or rather some uh, plain JDBC code here. You're gonna select select random UUID as random from the database. That is an H, we're gonna use an H2 database later on in this example. You could also use a MySQL database, whatever database you want, but I'll just want a random number and the H2 database has that function to give me a random number. So this will give you back a result set. Then you say a result set next. Actually, you have to wrap it in a while loop like so. And then what you can do is result set, you print out simply get string and then random. Random references the column label up here that you gave. And that's pretty much everything you do. So you get a data source, data connection, and then you run the application, hopefully it fails now, it does, because there's no qualifying bean of type data source available. That's right, because nowhere did we specify that bean. And here comes the trick in a Spring Boot application. Normally what happens is you go to source main resources and inside of that folder, you have a file which is called application properties, for example. Like so, now you have that file. And here you would, I think uh, in uh, Spring Boot, it's called spring.datasource.ul, have something like that. So that could be a URL to the MySQL database or the H2 database. And there's also something which is called driver class name, I think. If not, we're gonna fix these names in the next episode. And here you would have your H2 driver class or your MySQL driver class or something to get JDBC working. It doesn't matter too much what these properties are for now, but you not only want to have one application properties file here, but in Spring Boot, it's like when you put the application properties file in the same directory as your char file, it will load that properties file as well. When you create a properties file, which looks like application dev properties, so that is your current profile. It could be anything. So your spring profile, dev, production, whatever. It should also look inside this properties file. And spring has a ton of different places where it looks at these properties and then picks them up if these property fi properties files exist. So when you open up a browser and search for something like spring boot external properties, you'll see there's a documentation link to externalize configuration spring. And what you can see here is that there's 17 different places where Spring Boot by default looks for properties and also the order. So what's more important? So if there's two properties existing in the same files, then more specific property locations will override the less specific ones. But what you can see is here, for example, that Spring Boot tries to get the properties from your system get properties, from your environment variables, then some random prefix properties, then uh, profile properties outside of your jar file, and then profile properties inside of your jar file. So what we just saw 
application dash profile application dash profile and whatnot. Then the application properties file we just created and uh, a couple of more property sources, the ones you add to your spring configuration class, some default properties. So these are all the locations and it helps whenever you, you know you specified a property somewhere, but it gets overridden or not the value you think it is. It helps to go back to that documentation page and find out where does Spring Boot find all my properties. Now, you know what Spring Boot is looking for, but we're gonna implement basically these four locations in our code. But for this episode, it's enough. That was already a nice introduction. And otherwise, this video gets too long. Right, that was a quick episode. Let's finish up our implementation with the conditional property support in the next episode.